Thanks. Ah. Oh, that gets attributed to you. The first attribution we did. <laughs> okay. The, I think uh, attribution, a lot of people call it a holy grail. Some of us like to call it more like a unicorn. The one, I mean, and we were just having a discussion, a very, very casual chat just before this. We were coming out of here and we said, what is attribution? Okay, and how much attribution is good attribution? Till what stage that uh, can you keep going? And there comes the line which was like, attribution is like money. I don't know if anybody knows what is enough of it. So on that note, I think let's, uh, while most of us know what attribution is, let's try and get a little deeper into that. Let's try and figure out what, how, and where. So we have an interesting, very, very interesting panel and I would let them introduce themselves while they speak. Let's pick up very first thing, okay? If you can give one example of where you have had a very, very successful attribution delivering to business results and one where it's not so successful, some learning in any order. Why don't we start with you, Chandra? Okay, well, hi. Uh, so I, I work for Nestle and, you know, I can give you some Nestle stories about where attribution works and some of the challenges with attribution. And I'll give you a little bit of a global picture, you know, not just India, but also global, because we are looking at, of course, a very interconnected world in, that we live in today. So we have a coffee machines business in some parts of the world, you know, brands like Nespresso, Nescafe, Dolce Gusto, and so on. We sell machines and with the machines, there are some pods, etc. Now in that, you know the consumer fairly well. You know, you have got a good amount of first party data. You know who your consumers are. You're always trying to bring in through the consumer journey, you know, people at the top of the funnel. You have a good CDP, you know, in place over there to really understand, you know, who this person is. You're collecting first party data. You're moving through the entire consumer journey to purchase, to repurchase, to loyalty building. You're putting in different elements. You understand fairly well what's working and not just what's working, what's the value of each element, you're able to get through the journey. But the moment you go into other parts of the business, you know, where you go into fast moving consumer goods, which is still the majority of our, of our business, there you really don't know, yeah? And therefore to assign value or credit to a particular input at a particular stage of the consumer journey, whether you link it back to a platform, to a campaign, to a piece of messaging, or whatever it is, and what's the value, that system is quite broken. I mean, that's a very important element, and the promise of digital and digital marketing is that you would be able to kind of, you know, get to a more data-driven state, but that's the state of attribution that because all these are siloed, because all these are not joined together, you don't have a holistic understanding, you get maybe some pieces which are good. So for example, you know, wherever we run some small D2C businesses, though that's not our main foray, you know, we are able to understand where the traffic is coming from and what's really happening and some bits and pieces of it. But I think there's a long way to go for attribution overall to become, you know, really meaningful for marketeers to be able to really add value and for digital to take the next big leap as well. Thanks, thanks, uh, Chandan. I think that was from a side of a marketer or advertiser. Let's understand from the platform side, okay? How does the platform comes into play, okay? And how do you look at attribution? done by different brands. And if we can have a couple of examples, quick one, that'll be great. Yep, yep. So hi guys, I'm Kapil. I work for Adjust. Uh, and for those who you don't know what Adjust is, Adjust is a mobile marketing and attribution platform. And we help uh, our app marketers to help them understand which sources are driving them the most profitable users. So that's the bread butter of the business. And I specifically lead the insights function for them in India and Southeast Asia, and also the go-to-market strategy. So having said that, like uh, Ashish asked a very good question. So the point is like, if, you, if I'm to just look at the industry, how it evolved, like first we started, uh, the main KPI was driving installs. Later on with the MMP evolution, we shifted to CPA. That is, uh, we now track the outcomes basis, certain convergent KPIs, which could be let's say uh, KYC conversion or whatever it is. And all this has been powered by uh, something called last, at, last touch attribution. So the thing is, uh, uh, like though last touch has been, uh, uh, all the app marketers have been able to scale it beautifully for last 15 years. So last touch is something that works, but uh, uh, 
there are also some shortcomings which have uh, which we have seen and uh, it's like for example just to give you a real life example uh, right now we are all in the appraisal season somewhere or the other so uh, though last touch is a beautiful model but if we are to apply it to ourselves which means that you your performance will be only judged basis the month basis your last month's work so like we all know that that if we do if we work basis that model that is not a uh, good and we won't want to be judged basis only last month's work we want to be uh, assessed basis all the uh, months of work we have done so that's where uh, as a company we are helping app marketers to make sense of those other touch points and make a holistic understanding of how what is the interplay between different channels so they see the complete picture and not just work basis last touch so and and app marketers are also learning with this evolution and that's where we have seen uh, people are coming up with different attribution models and uh, trying to make sense out of it so yeah overall we are seeing that the uh, industry is evolving and uh, app people are able, able to make better sense out of the attribution data people would you want to add okay while he spoke about the last touch a lot why don't we look at that how do you look at attribution and which all the industries in your view have kind of mastered the attribution and third what is this jargon about last touch and which which is the better way i mean last touch first touch no touch multi touch i don't know i mean it's getting very touchy and feely yeah hi everyone i'm uh, vipul from afil so i think uh, for the entire industry attribution is as important as you know the media or the channels or whatever marketing that you're doing because finally as uh, a marketing platform that is what determines whether we are you know mostly making revenues or not so so i think it's a very complex problem and unfortunately you know when we say last touch attribution uh i would call it a path of convenience because what uh, you know most of the industry or the marketers have chosen to do is to say that whoever touched the consumer last is the only person who played a role in uh, getting a conversion from that consumer whereas if we look at all of us and even if you look at the stages of a marketing funnel at every stage there are different media channels and different platforms which would have played a role so in a way what last touch attribution is doing is crediting the person who got the last click uh, from that user and wherever the user actually clicked and converted is the only person which is getting the attribution for it which is wrong because in the entire journey there could have been multiple platforms multiple touch points with the users across different channels different uh, media vehicles or even in some cases you know offline online come together to play a role and the mechanisms to credit each channel for the role that they played in the consumer journey unfortunately are you know not very strong in our industry and i think that is the reason i would say that a large reason why uh, you know in a lot of cases we find that there is ad fraud etc happening is because of this race to claim the last touch of the user and that's the reason why whether you look at programmatic channels or you look at non programmatic channels you will always have people trying to fire clicks platforms trying to you know fake clicks impressions etc just to get that last touch of the attribution and i think it is the most significant problem that we are facing today and like uh, you know ashish said that the way every marketer tracks the consumer journey so for an app marketer they would say okay who is the user who installed who is the user who you know registered opened the app how many times added to the cart and finally how does my funnel work post the app install or post acquiring the user to getting a uh, conversion if in the same manner the app marketer or you know any marketer looks at even what happened before the user came on to their platform and it is an equally complex journey and i think that is the only way that we will be able to fix uh, the attribution okay before we move on to next question just one rapid fire all of you are marketers at the end of the day am i right you run your own campaigns he is anyways Nestle, I mean, I'm sure you run like what, 30% of ROI for marketers. So, any on that note, which is your favorite attribution model? Just one line answer. Well, we would like to get into multi-touch attribution, you know, with a larger model approach. But I think there are various shortcomings in it. Okay, so multi-touch would like to, which means on a scale of one to ten, where do you stand? Five being in middle, one being single touch. last touch or whatever first touch i think the promise of multi touch is towards a 8 or 9 but the delivery is towards a 3 or 4 ah that's like a 
that's a that's a very 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 interesting statement there is a lot of difference between ambition and ammunition when it comes to multi touch but before i move on to that what about you so basically uh, the choice of a attribution model will differ by business to business like for example for some business the first touch point is the most important one for some maybe the middle touch point would be the most important but having said that that's why it will differ from business to business but uh, i would still prefer last touch attribution because that's what has worked for almost last 15 years for the entire industry you have so had <laughs> a good december i can tell you that <laughs> what you are on december cycle or march cycle appraisal yeah it's it's uh, in march i can tell you he's betting a lot on ad tech yeah <laughs> last touch attribution okay I think for us, it is uh, multi-touch attribution as well as you know going forward even cross-screen attribution because now there are multiple screens which are coming into the picture when you know you are tracking a user journey. So that would be the models, and I think from our perspective, we are quite far from it. Okay, so so interestingly, in fact, what I hear you guys saying is that we our wish list is multi-touch and more complex model. The reality is. single touch and probably couple of hops here and there okay now and that brings me to a question my understanding of attribution says uh, attribution requires two basic ingredients one to know who is the person is about user and one to know what he did and where what and where i am just keeping at one bucket you can have three so basically two or three different things you require to to be able to these are basic ingredients to make this soup of attribution all together and that brings me to a question okay which is you are trying to know about a user whether it is consented or not and trying also to know what and where he has done or whatever he has done where he has done am i right now if you were to it was all good if it was a perfect word but there is something called as data privacy and i mean nobody is untouched from that in the era of data privacy how do you think this attribution models are going to move or how data privacy is impacting and how do marketers come up this challenge of data privacy as well as your journey attribution i think let's start from that side from platform and then we'll come to the marketer yeah so i think uh, data privacy will definitely play an important role in the evolution of uh, uh, the attribution models we've already seen it in the uh, case of the apple ecosystem where apple uh, completely moved to their own internal attribution which was you know com uh, compliant with all the data privacy rules etc and we are seeing similar changes happening on the <coughs> android ecosystem as well and on the you know uh, web ecosystems so i think the way it will impact is that moving from more deterministic kind of attribution models to more probabilistic kind of attribution models uh but the role also becomes important over there that how do you then in that kind of a scenario track the multi touch uh that the user has had and how do you attribute each touch to the kind of final conversions that the user is delivering so definitely from deterministic to probabilistic is uh, the main change which i see happening from uh uh these changes you know there was a when and this this dates back a little time back i was having a very interesting discussion with somebody about attribution and data privacy and i'll just leave that thought with you before you start and this gentleman came up with one line saying data privacy in a attribution platform is like that statutory warning which is there inside a smoking zone saying smoking is injurious to health you have put in a so how do you, how do you react to that yeah, yeah. so like what ashish meant uh, said is very true like honestly advertising and privacy are very like contrary things or very opposite to each other but the thing is there is still a way to do it in a privacy compliant manner so that's where like i think apple gave this leg to the privacy moment by introducing the att framework now for those who don't know att framework basically in ios uh, if you install a app uh, that app shows you a prompt called uh, do you want to give this app uh, uh, permission to track your usage you say yes or no now uh, if i am to just guess like what do you think what is the consent rate which so how many people what percentage of people are giving let's say a consent to track their usage if i can just take a guess in this audience any idea maybe raise of hands 
Okay. I think raise of hands. Yeah, yeah, raise of hands would be good. Just, just throw a random number. What even if you, you even if you raise, we can't see you, so don't worry about it. Let me give you one. This is like attribution and privacy. We are just yeah. saying attribute, but you are in complete privacy mode. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> yeah. What is the number? Okay, okay. So, so I'll tell you. The in gaming space, people there are 50% of the people roughly give consent to track their usage. But if you look at the non-gaming space, the numbers could vary. Uh, the optimus, opti most optimal number is 30%, and it could go down to as low as 3% also. So basically, the point is, like, a lot of people are not giving the consent, which clearly shows the trust deficit which users have. Okay. So how do you still measure them? So that's where the overall measurement landscape is actually changing from measuring basis user level data or device level data to a marketer's ability to measure basis aggregate level data. So like uh, what Apple introduced called SKN network. Now for those users who have not given you consent, how do you measure that? So that's where Apple has introduced a aggregated framework of measuring those audiences. And that's where even adjust is moving in that direction. That is, uh, let's say tomorrow, if users are not, not giving consent, then how can app marketers still track those users? So that's where we are coming up with this new products called incrementality uh, and market mix modeling. So just to uh, simplify what incrementality is, is uh, it is a product which can work even basis aggregate data. And it can clearly tell you uh, in three simple metrics whether the campaign you are running that delivered an incremental impact or the same impact or it actually cannibalize your organics. So that is one product which we are bringing. So tomorrow, even if you don't have, let's say, user level data or device level data, this product can still help you understand the impact of your campaign and thereby uh, optimize basis that. So that is one thing. Secondly, as an organization, we are obsessed with collecting a lot of data, right? <laughs> Every market is obsessed with collecting a lot of first party data, third party data, zero party data, and 10 things like that. But the biggest challenge is how to use that. And that's where we are also introducing something called media mix modeling or marketing mix modeling. Uh, and that's an algorithm which actually uh, uh, works on your entire first party data sets and it comes up with certain meaningful recommendations for you. So basically, now once you uh, run your data through this media mix modeling product, it will clearly tell you that let's say tomorrow if you have to again spend $1 million, then what would be the optimum allocation for those particular channels? And it will also predict you uh, like what would be the impact of that particular dollar. Basically, you are saying whatever you do, if you consent, that is okay. Yes, yes, so that absolutely. is what you are saying. Whichever yeah. platform, so if you are a user, you know their favorite movie is what you did, I know what you did last summer. So you know what he means. On that note, okay, it brings on brings me to a very, very as a as a marketer and as a user, okay. What one question which is sticking around to me is that if given a choice to users, they won't like to be tracked. As a marketer, how do you cross that barrier? And what is it that top three things which you could do to instill that confidence in users so that your attribution as a, as a system works better? See, I think there is a lot of value in aggregated data still. I don't think the value of aggregated data has completely gone out. There is a value in marketing mix modeling. There's a value in CMMs, you know, media mixes and all that kind of thing. I think we should definitely look at that still because it actually gives you a holistic picture from end to end. Now, when you come to privacy and consent, of course, privacy and consent is super important. There's no way out. And we have seen the kind of, you know, issues if you don't have the right elements of privacy and consent and all of that. I think that is something that has to be respected and all of that. And therefore, you know, marketeers, platforms, whosoever, has to instill a sense of trust that somebody is willing to give some data which will be put to some relevant and useful use. You know, if you look at things like, you know, personalization and all of that, if it's used for the consumer, for the user, for the person in the right way, it is, it may be useful, it may add value to the person, but unfortunately, a lot of that data is being misused, it's being used for all kinds of things, there's too many spams, you know, everything else is out there and then there are frauds and this and that and so on. So therefore, there will be a resistance from a consumer perspective un until the level of institutional trust in all of this goes up, which is very, very hard to achieve. But this is something that the industry needs to think about. And the industry needs to come in because without that sense of trust, it's very important to have this level of trust because without the sense of trust, I don't think we will be making 
getting the right data and making good use of the data to be able to serve the consumer finally and to be able to serve us properly. So I think this is very, very important for us to look at. Of course, the, you know, the, I, I see the models moving towards more kind of you know, aggregate level models and they still have a lot of value. To be able to fuse some data which is coming directly from the digital platforms, maybe some other forms of consumer understanding, research, insights mining, offline data to be also fused in to understand. Because you know, often the top of the funnel kind of you know, attribution levels are often undervalued. And if you go more and more into the last click type of attribution, then the later ones are overvalued. And probably that's not the right picture. You're undervaluing something. And because all these are happening in individual you know, silos or, or walled gardens or individual platforms, individual apps, individual you know, elements, you are never able to connect it. So I think we do need a connector. We do need something to be able to understand the full value because only then will the value to the consumer go up and that is what we are aiming towards. I think very, very interesting way you put it across. Consumer doesn't want to be tracked. Platforms don't want to share. Marketers want all of it and don't know what to do about it. Just for those of you who are picking up or trying to figure out where the rotten tomatoes are, I am a marketer before you throw them. And if you are deciding to throw, please throw not too much ripe so that I can use them later. Yeah. On that note, I think, you know, one of the very interesting thing, and I am a marketer of a BFSI. Yeah. Potatoes will come. Yeah. Eggs are going costly a little bit. I'm just giving you options so that you can attribute them rightly. Now, on that note, I think one of the things which we realized, so, you know, these are the hops which happen. So, people are filling up wrong leads. You say, okay, do a SMS verified. And then we stumbled upon something where is you can generate a number. Yeah? We said, oh, you generated a number, so that number is generated only for some five minutes of time, so that you can get an OTP and the marketer will never be able to call you. We said, you are intelligent, I am more intelligent. Let's put email ID. And we figured out people have cracked that. You had temporary email IDs. And now, I mean, I don't think so. Any discussion is over till the time we use the intelligent sounding words like AI. I don't know if I understand that. It's like AI. That's the only, it's the Maharashtrian word which means hello mom. Okay, that's how I understand AI. Okay, that's my level of understanding where it ends and starts. But with the advent of AI, whatever little I see that this is one gigantic genie which has been left out in open can do everything, which essentially means today there was a cookie, now you talk about fingerprinting, you talk about device fingerprinting, all, all these jargons. AI enables you to create randomized device IDs and which is getting built on the platforms. So when we are talking about this entire attribution models where you can have similar propensity models being deployed, how do you think this technological advancement at both ends? It's like you hop, I hop, okay, or whatever. There's some word whichever you like to use. How do you think the attribution models or the future of attribution is going to change in this technological advanced world? Say about one year. They'll Beyond that, I am not paid to ask. So I think it will, uh, it definitely allows us to do much more because versus, you know, a single system or a single piece of code determining, uh, you know, the attribution, you have the power to track the entire user journey and see exactly what were the touch points, how they influenced and what was the impact if the user came in through this path to the final conversion versus a different path and so on and so forth. And I think that itself is very, very powerful because today that job is left to the attribution platforms. But when you are, uh, when you are tracking the entire attribution journey you are, uh, using AI, even a marketer can deploy platforms, even platforms like ourselves are deploying a lot of it to see exactly how the user journey is shaping up and what is leading to the final conversion. Okay, are you, is your platform using AI to deliver better attribution both in terms of Tracking, modeling, and reporting. So, like, I would also want to talk on the earlier question, but yeah, having said that, like, we are using machine learning, uh, which is a p component of AI, so it's not like pure play AI. But yeah, one more thing, like, on the earlier question which Ashish asked, 
uh, I, from my experience, what I feel is the humans are still far superior compared to AI models, which we are seeing you being Thank deployed God, I for fraud. Thank God, I have my job for next at least one year. Yeah, being deployed for fraud. The reason I'll tell you because kya hai na, it's it is said right ki nakal mein bhi akal honi chahiye. So we see fraud coming from multiple sources. A lot of these channels will try to spam us. Let's say if it is a CPA campaign, they will try to send us fake transactions data and things like that. But like I said, nakal mein akal honi chahiye. They would send us a fake transaction ID, uh, ID. And if you look at the time span, time stamp, the time stamp is before the install time stamp. But now with the install nahi hua, and they are already sending me a transaction. So like the humans and all these marketers like Ashish who are sitting uh, there, they are intelligent enough to go through the data and figure this out. So even if you try to use any sophisticated algorithms to like fool the marketer, I think the marketer is still one step ahead of that. The PO is waiting in the office. <laughs> I'll just ask somebody. Well, from an AI perspective, if AI can solve for three things, you know, one is we're talking about a person, like you said, yeah, if AI can kind of, you know, de-identify that person, still call a person, but de-identify the person then be able to understand the person across platforms, across you know, different cookie pools, across different devices, and people move from one to the other and so on, and be able to sort of understand that this person is connecting on that and connect the three together in a privacy compliant way, then maybe we will get a better understanding of the entire journey, and maybe a better understanding across different elements out there. But this is a tall order for AI to be able to do it, to be able to demystify, to be able to de- uh, identify and still be able to provide, you know, user level information across to be able to attribute it throughout the journey. You know, on, on, on last click attribution, usually we talk about one example, you know, sometimes that we take up uh, when we discuss about it. It's a bit like you and your family are driving through, you know, a particular city, maybe a couple of kids and uh, you and your spouse, and you suddenly see the M arch of a McDonald's. And then you decide to go into a McDonald's. Now, is it that, you know, because of seeing the M arch, did you walk into the McDonald's or was it that the kids were already a bit hungry and, you know, you wanted to have a burger or they wanted to have a burger or you wanted to move there or you already have a good brand impression of McDonald's, you know, and what the kind of food is, etc. What would it be? And therefore, it's probably the latter where you are looking at it more holistically. And if I can solve for that, you know, remove the person individual component, be able to track across and provide meaningful information, I think it will be a great use to, to all marketeers, to all platforms, everyone. Chandan, you almost picked up my, the <coughs> track of my last question. And I would want a 30 second answer so that we have, we still have one minute for if anybody wants to ask any questions to you guys. I'm anyways. So, we talk about all this attribution and normally we talk about digital. Okay, all of it examples were digital. And this is the truth bomb. Have you ever seen any example where attribution has worked perfectly in omni-channel? Now I have two unicorns fighting. Attribution and omni-channel. In 30 seconds, yes, no, and if there is, you can give me an example. There are evolving models on cross-screen attribution, uh, uh, but definitely, you know, <laughs> online to offline, I think there are still yet evolutions to take place. So I haven't seen too many models work perfectly well in an omni-channel kind of an environment. Maybe I'm the platform, so I'll always say yes, because we have QR codes, which can That was a question option. for truth bomb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yes, Miles where, says it all. Yeah, yeah. So that's where QR codes are a big solution to this problem. So if you want to bring any touch point online, I think QR codes are an excellent way, and the execution, <laughs> the creative execution can actually deliver way higher results than what uh, normal channels would deliver. Yeah. Chandan, do you use? 360 degree attribution, offline online. Well, do we do marketing mix modeling, which is offline online, because a large proportion of our sales are still offline, and offline is very important for us. So we look at it holistically and do it. I think the model is getting sharper and getting more perfect at things, but they're still not there. But yes, we try and look at it more holistically. Whether it's omni-channel or multi-channel or cross-screen, it's probably more cross-screen and multi-channel rather than omni-channel in that sense of the term, but I think the technology and the modeling practices are also evolving in that direction and hopefully we will get to a better place. So I hear Chandan saying that both, you are right, omni-channel as well as attribution is a unicorn, all of us are chasing it. Do we agree? Yes, no. Okay. Platforms are not going to say yes and don't change the attribution models, please. On that note, I think I have like 30 seconds to a minute in case there are any questions. Oh, 
there's a question hello so my question is for uh, vipul and kapil uh, okay so my question is for vipul and kapil i wanted to know how do you see the uh, regulatory environment shaping up in india when you compare it to us or european laws and how are your businesses preparing for various eventualities that might follow well in our case uh, we are already a global business and we have been dealing with the regulatory environments in pretty much all geographies across the globe so whether it is us europe etc and the regulatory environment in india is shaping up around uh, similar models so i would say as uh, a company and on all our platforms we are already prepared and compliant with most of the global regulations so i don't see a challenge there and also in case of adjust like adjust is a german based company and we know where the all this privacy regulations are coming from so that's why uh, as a company we take privacy very seriously honestly the company has this philosophy that we would fo give privacy more priority compared to the profits so that's where we because like you know if there is any goof up on the privacy front we are going to get closed down so that's why privacy comes first for us and then uh, uh, profits if i may add platforms as a marketer when you are thinking about regulatory platforms are one component of your entire business model they pro they help you collect and process and report the data part of it but to the business model and to the consumer journey you have multiple different tops it's a third party platform or a second party platform whatever it is uh, still it can reside in your environment or outside but as a marketer you need to think much wider and holistically about the ways you are collecting about the ways you are processing and finally whether you are putting the data at rest or wherever we are housing you are doing because that will that's a more important thing to consider whichever business model you are operating with platforms will be compliant i mean they are operating so if that was the only question <coughs> is there yes i ah there 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 oh my god were we uh, were we to hi uh, i'm anubhav and i represent a bfsi company as yours uh, a credit card company uh, so i like I, you anubhav i like you too so uh, the question is uh, the customer journey in each and every industry is different uh, from bfsi to F, uh, fmcgs and so is the penetration uh, i want to know from you the uh, does the does the trigger of a marketing campaign principle remains same across all uh, the industries because the source of first party data from each industry differs i mean it differs from industry to industry that is the question who is this question to uh, uh, i think any of them can answer uh, the person or just besides you will be uh, good enough to answer i think i'll okay so should you okay well yes in every industry the journey is different you know the starting point is different the closing point is different and of course the objectives of every campaign is different so yes you have to look at it you know from the perspective of what you are trying to achieve you know there is a fundamental difference for example the industry that you come from the financial industry the moment you buy any financial product you already know the person you know for example if i were to go to a bank and open an account they would know everything about me without which they will not even sort of you know give me an account whereas you can buy a nescafe or a kit kat or a maggi you know 100 times in in the year or 20 times or 50 times in the year without anybody knowing who this person is you know the manufacturer doesn't know the retailer doesn't know nothing it can be completely anonymous so therefore to understand attribution you will have to look at the right specificities and also see what's the value of attribution what will if i even were to know this person and we talk about millions of consumers in our categories in our brands you know what would be the value of knowing this person and what will be the incremental understanding or the incremental business value of that and those are the things that have to be answered in that context so, <coughs> so i, I, I hope like you got your answer before the last click turns into the last kick i would like to vacate the floor i'm sorry we will be available outside look at this lady she has been warning me and giving me those campaigns for like some time now and i have finally decided to click on the campaign and your attribution model is done yeah thanks sir But thanks I guys i think i hope the interest uh, the discussion was interesting and we were able to add some value so thank you also you can connect us, uh, connect with us offline also so in case if you
you have any queries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ashish. Thank